What is up, guys? I'm Figaro. This is the Fifth Element Hip Hop Show here on Radio Paul Chicago's Couch Connection. It's myself, Alejandro Hernandez, and we got uh, G Tech Deal Motor Four. And before we get into that interview, I'm gonna get into uh, Demon Thon and why we're here. So this is a 40 to 60 hour marathon we're doing here. Uh, all the funds that we're doing in this fundraiser specifically to go to Lurie's Children's Hospital. If you want more information on how you can donate and give to what we're doing here, is uh, visit Radio to Paul's Demon Thon page and donate. So with that being said, I'm gonna get into, into some G Tech uh, Deal Motor Four. And the song I'm actually going to play is, uh, I'm going to play Monster, so we'll be back. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Pen and paper eliminating the haters, obliterating. I'm saying that I'll never be the greatest. Get offended at the writing. Imagine, imagine, mechanical dragon, all in the present, preserving the verdict. Is murder with words and the words I'm observing. Chilling in the garden, the feet, not me. Navels are chaining the castles, never found them. A phantom, a challenge, a massive battle. The rappers always waiting for the data to make it. I'm innovative with the cannons, feeling famous because they bugging like cicadas. A total annihilation, the rage of the faces, anticipating my every movement. The coolest and cool and approving. The unit of the dope ones, the vocals defeating opponents. My motive is showing anybody, everybody, till I am done. You can see me with the puns, more like a punch in the face with a slump. Show like it's tons of sons coming with the ill slain trying to make a name on the hall of fame while maintaining refraining from being lame so anybody thinking they speaking that he could not defeat me with a meat cleaver i'm much too clever whenever whenever the weather i'll sever your neck page and dr frankenstein i think we got a monster page and dr frankenstein i think we got a monster page and dr frankenstein i think we got a monster So impeccable, fun and sinful, genuine, general, flowing on a pedestal, an automatic, over static, semantic, I make a panic, competitive, pushy panic, it's passing, competitive, with the minimal, pivotal, power, deliberate, minerals, and the principles, given the inner, most sinful, in you, so any lyricals, kill them slow. Imitations are taking the culture of forsaken and raping, cause rappers are published with public opinion, lyricism, focus on material, living, depicting, selling poison, and killing. Oh, blowing like a tech nine, Mr. Twister, and Bone Thug for the Midwest, and Profess for the Express, for the ORF. Mr. Miyagi, his carbon copy won't stop me. You're like a fat chick, your style sloppy. And even Slim would think that your records are shady. So I'ma keep slaying these pages till mama pushing Mercedes. Probably created from Hades the day that they made me amazing and seasoned. These rhymes keep you thinking that I am a monster. The way I be beasting on tracks. Dumps of babies don't speak that garbage for homies, you trash. There's enough of these cheesy rappers that suck in this craft. Yeah. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Page and Dr. Frankenstein, I think we got a monster. Yo, yo. So I'm going to spit a quick acapella that I made specifically for this. Uh, let me start that off with. You could catch me up on Helen DeGeneres while I'm being a degenerate. Have you taken mad cetera Cause I get up in your head again. Latinos be my people. You could go and check the melanin. Wreck it with the rhetoric, resurrecting, etc. They say my... Bars is barbaric, these rappers horsing around, I say we go feed them carrots. Couldn't see what's ahead like looking in blurred mirrors, blinded by false merit, material they inherit. They could never see ahead like I was saying coming off the top. G-Tech, representing that real hip hop. I come from the city of Common and Kanye, where it's common for cons to sell, yay. I said I come from the city of Common and Kanye. Where it's common for cons to sell, yay. And I'm calling out politicians, should give them minimum wage. And watch, you'll see change. The thing that seems strange, there's always a new face, yet things stay the same. Society's left brain, do the right thing, they brand me insane. You wanna lower the crime? Let's talk about education. When teachers are paid crap, put in charge of the child raising and cognitive elevation. When rappers rich off the payments and paid by the corporations to keep the youth in enslavement. 
Some say it's Illuminati, some say it's the Freemasons. The truth is that me and you don't accomplish nothing through silence. Not saying resort to violence, but if you pack in a piece, I suggest that you get a license. Read the laws, get enlightened. Get enlightened, load your brain like a rifle and show them real defiance. This one for all my soldiers who keep in the RBG, cause real gangsters are leaders who always teaching the seeds. Yeah. That's what's up. Appreciate it, homie. The yeah. middle four. What's bars. up, bro? Yeah, yeah, what's up, homie? More bars in the cottage town. We're just gonna go right into this. Uh G Tech, what did what did the name originate from? And also uh, the meaning. Well, um about uh Fifth, sixth grade, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm still obsessed with it till, till now. It's pretty much kind of like a, I was on this website. It was like a, a, ro- a role playing type anime website that I used to go on when I was a kid. And I was like, "Yo, G Tech sounds dope, man. G Tech sounds like a, a, like a superhero, like a cybernetic robot or something like that, man." And and that's what I originally was uh, going by, G T E K. And then eventually around high school, when I started developing my rap skills some more, I added on the ill metaphor because I felt like uh, metaphor is a, a essential part of being a lyricist, putting, some, putting out some dope stuff like that. So it eventually integrated to GTIM, which is G-Tech, the ill metaphor. And uh, I, I guess that's, that's pretty much it. I actually have an acronym within that because that's already an acronym mm-hmm. GTIM G Tech that's like a uh, gifted technician existing kingly something like that so I guess that's pretty much it right there that's what's up um, what's what's the relation to to Eminem in, in your uh, upbringing oh man uh, <laughs> I was reading some interviews bro wait, not wait. many but it's up there so yeah. I to get some information specifically uh, 8 Mile yeah, man, uh, around, like I said, when I came up with that rap name, Eminem is definitely a huge influence on me. Uh, when 8 Mile dropped, that's pretty much, I was a shorty watching that movie, and I was like, damn, man, I want to I wanna be like uh, that cat, man. He's over there battling and stuff, and I, I actually, uh, all the kids on the playground, they were all totally hyped up about the movie, too, and that's when I started uh, rap battling and stuff. I can't say... Some of the stuff I was saying, cause it, <laughs> I wish I could, but uh, that that's when I came up with my uh, first bars, pretty much, and then also on the internet too. I, I would rap Battle Cats, and uh, Eminem, like, uh, definitely is one of my uh, biggest influences in getting me started. For sure. I mean, who are who are some other influences for you? I could say, uh, and a lot of cats compare me to him a lot. Is Immortal Technique. Okay. Uh. Uh, KRS One, man. I I met, I had the. You have a picture with him. Yeah, I had a uh, blessings with being able to meet him. I was able to meet Rock him as well. You know, these guys are the godfathers of hip hop. They they uh pretty much started this, man. So you got I got to pay homage to those guys. Uh, the list goes on, man. You know, say Biggie, Tupac. It's it's hard for my my top five always changes too, man. So. Uh, who else, man? Big L. Okay. Big L's another another dope cat, man. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, big pun, man. Big pun. It's a uh, huge influence on on how my rhyme schemes and my flow. Cause I I tend to uh, keep a real technical, real I guess wordy type of flow, mm-hmm. and 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 it keeps going. And I definitely picked that up from Big Pun. So a lot of these guys, I I try to combine them their styles mm-hmm. and obviously make my own style which is kind of how i came up with my album the uh way of the intercepting round device which is influenced off of, uh bruce lee the jeet kune do concept which is kind of like a hybrid of different martial arts but i took that and uh, applied it to hip-hop and i'm like a hybrid of different rap styles for sure yeah, you know you talk about uh you know Eminem, Big Pun, Big L, all these influences. A lot of these guys are very techno. Incorporate a lot of literary devices. You as well. Is that like something when you first start out? Is that something that like you had to like practice like day and night? Because I remember like Eminem would like read the dictionary in order to be able to use all these words. It's like, is that something that like you try? Like, did you read dictionaries? Oh at yeah, night man. As a kid? Yeah. Um, that's uh, one of the ways that uh, my my pops would would. Uh, his way of punishing me, he'd make me write out words and do the dictionary. And uh, in school, they would uh, 
like the English programs. I actually in, enjoyed like doing that book and writing out the words, and I started to eventually develop an obsession with different words and stuff like that. So definitely, man. Uh, and uh, poetry, like uh, when I started to learn about that and the different uh, literary devices like you were talking about, so, uh, that started to definitely uh, influence my style. For sure. Well, let's let's take it back. I mean, you just talked about big pun, and yeah. uh, there's I'm not gonna name who. But there's two dudes in here rocking some Puerto Rican gear. <laughs> <laughs> so let's How'd talk you about. Know? Let, let, let's talk about let's talk about that uh, that upbringing, uh, your roots. Because I mean, you're very proud of who you are. We had you for an event in in November, and one of the things you talked about was uh, that event specifically was relating to you know, immigration. When you talked about. Uh, the importance of, of solidarity and rem- remembering where you're from and remembering that uh, pretty much this country is, is raised on, on immigrants raised on communities of color and and solidarity, which you definitely talk about in with the new music. So for you, how was it coming up in the city of Chicago or growing up in the city of Chicago? I love Chicago, man. You know, the, despite uh, the backlash the media is giving our city right now, you know, a lot of the, the music I put out, I try to show a more positive side of the city and... Uh, Growing up here, it, it's awesome, man. It's a it's a melting pot of of different cultures, and it's a beautiful thing, man. It it uh, for me, Chicago ha- has uh shown the the beauty of humanity, I guess, because we have so many different cultures, like I was saying. And I grew up uh like we were saying earlier. I think you grew up around the same area, Belmont Cragen, and it's a it's a him too. Uh, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> originally from Humboldt. A word up. That's yeah. that's right there too, man. Yeah, and you know it's predominantly a, a, a Latino community. You know, you, you also have uh, African Americans and uh, smaller amount of white people, maybe more uh, Europeans based. But uh, yeah, growing up in Chicago, it's uh, opened my mind, I, I, I guess, to to being uh, appreciative of other cultures, especially my own. I'm uh, half Puerto Rican and half Salvadorian. And my uh, dad is an uh, immigrant from El Salvador. And I guess uh, some people at the top would consider Puerto Ricans kind of, even though technically they're not, it's because it's a commonwealth, if you know you're... It's, it's a weird thing. We're yeah. basically, we're just a territory. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. And my mom was born over there, so definitely, yeah, oppressed. Because <laughs> there's a... In both those countries right now, it's it's uh, it's a terrible situation. But uh, like you said, man, I definitely am proud of my culture and being Latino, and being Latino that that in itself is a melting pot of different <laughs> different cultures. You know, the the indigenous population, the African population, and the Spaniards. You know, we're we're a hybrid and stuff too, man. So I embrace that because you know we're we're all, we're all the same. We're all human, man. In, in the end. Yeah. You know, what do you think is like the role of like Latinos in hip hop? Because like, you know, we're not very like mainstream in hip hop. However, right. if you look at the history of it, we've always been ingrained in that culture. You look at Big Pun, uh, you know, the whole uh, Fat Joe, uh, you know, all these Latin cats have had like, look, look right now, the biggest like crossover, one of the biggest crossover stars in hip hop right now is Lin-Manuel Miranda, mm. you know. Um, That's true. So, like, we've always been here. However, you know, we haven't had, like, you know, a a Tupac or a Biggie. So, like, what do you think? So, like, we always get overlooked. But what do you think is, like, the role of Latinos in the hip-hop community? Um, Latinos have been in hip-hop since the beginning, and a lot of people don't know that, man. We, uh, you know, if you know the origins of hip-hop, it started out in New York. And New York has a huge Puerto Rican population, so we were there, you know, Crazy Legs, that's one of the, the most famous uh, B-boys of all time. He's Puerto Rican. Even uh, with uh, the, the... The Last Poets. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, blanking, uh, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Fili- uh, is it Felipe Luciano? Felipe Luciano. Think, yeah. Young yeah. Lords. You, and he was organizing and he was a part of The Last Poets. So it's always been a part of the culture. Yes, sir. Yeah, that that's a great one, uh, Felipe Luciano, like you're saying. Um even with uh, one of the first uh, breakout groups, uh, it's not coming to mind right now. Uh, gosh, uh, you know they're like the the to the rhythm of the beat, the to the hip hop, mm-hmm. hip. 
Uh, Sugar, Hill Sugar Hill Gang, yes, yes, Sugar Hill Gang. You know, even one of their MCs was a Puerto Rican cat too, and that's one of the the first, if not the first, uh, hip hop song to go mainstream mm-hmm. that really put us on the map. So yeah, the Latinos have been there since the beginning, but I don't think we we get a a, a lot of credit towards that. And uh, as of now, it's really dope because a lot more cats are are coming up. Uh, uh, as as far as uh, representing their heritage and culture and and putting ourselves into hip hop since we've been there s- since the beginning, for sure. So for I mean for you, you just kind of talked about owning your craft. How were you able to own your craft through the process of of your hip hop career? What was the 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 beginning of it, and then how have you improved since? Man, that that's such a uh, a long span of time, bro. Like I said, I'm. 25 now i've been doing that since the fifth grade so what i was like eight or nine or something like that when i first started and i sucked (laughs) i sucked so bad and i guess that that's part of honing your craft man you got to start from somewhere and uh over the time over a long time man it's (laughs) of continuously continuously practicing man and and you know asking for people's feedback and and you know constantly be telling man constantly being told I was whack t- being told to stop man and uh yeah, motivation. yeah I that's exactly man I I took it as uh as motivation bro to to keep on molding myself into what I am today and uh like I said I, uh one of my biggest influences is Eminem who got who has a real technical style and I started really studying him and listening to his documentaries and how he said he would hone his craft and I would study countless albums from the beginning of hip hop from the 70s till now really trying to emulate the greatest MCs and uh com- combining that with my own style with with uh, cuz to me I feel like hip hop is a modern day poetry you know you got like haikus which are a specific style of poetry and then, then obviously you got you got us. We're we're modern day Shakespeareans, I would say. You know, we're even inducted into Harvard right now. So it it it's a uh, definitely a a dope uh, dope to be a part of this, man. You, you talk about a lot about you know paying homage to to the people who came before you. Uh, in this new age of of hip hop, you know, there's there's a lot of you know uh, young cats who are getting a lot of buzz. Uh, and not not just for their music, but also because of like things they say, essentially disrespecting that past. Like Lil Yachty, um, he came out and like retracted his statements about Biggie because like he actually went back to listen to Biggie and he, he realized how dope he was. But like before, he was like, you know, I can I can't even name five Biggie songs. Like, what's the point? Like, I don't need to listen to him. So like, why do you think it's so important to to pay respects to the people who came before you in hip hop community? I think uh, pr- pretty much without them, there's no us, bro. And uh, the pay- that's like uh, growing up and um, you you uh, learn to pay respect to your elders, I guess. That, that's just kind of like a, um, uh, I don't know. I, I guess that, that's something that, that I, growing up I, I learned and uh you got to be respectful to them and these guys are to me they're super dope mm-hmm. it's it's strange to me you know a lot of these cats they don't they don't really care about it but i guess at the same time i i, I try to and i kind of understand you know they're doing their own thing they're doing a new style and which i don't necessarily have that much against them unless you know they're being fake about it if if that's them mm-hmm. that's them you know I, that most respect to you but yeah, for me, yeah, that that's really important to respect your elders. That's just that's that's just like an important value to have, you know, if you want to be an open-minded person. And then also to kind of like piggyback piggyback off that. Why is it specifically just hip hop where that's like the case where you have to pay homage to your elders, where you have to pay respect to those that came before you, where you can't segue to do your own own thing and to have these subgenres within hip hop. Uh, no one else seems to have that issue with rock, with I mean specifically Latino music. You have so many subgenres within one specific genre, so why is it just specifically hip hop? Where no, you have to res- uh, pay respect to those that came before you, and if you don't, it's disrespectful, and we can't rock with you. 
I'd say probably because the the culture is like kind of like a, a a family, I guess. You know, a lot of a lot of the the younger cats that are coming out right now that do pay respect and pay homage to those older guys, you know, consider them like their uncles and fathers and stuff and you know they're they're getting mad mad love and and that's what it is it's it's cause our culture is a big family and we're the only culture in the world mm -hmm. that any ethnicity could get involved and it doesn't matter what color you are man it, it depends on your skills you know we're not we don't judge each other by how how we look man if you're dope you're dope so I guess that's that's what I would say man that uh, that that is a strange thing that you know uh, a rock guy or a country guy he don't gotta it doesn't matter to him who came before him he could just get in, involved in the music and uh and i guess uh prosper whereas hip-hop were were a combination of a, a lot of different styles and that might be a thing too because mainstream society they have a, a certain depiction of what the hip-hop culture is and unfortunately right now most people uh, associate us with negativity and being gangsters and stuff like that. Whereas, uh, so we we have to we have to kind of go to those older generations to help us out and uh, keep pushing this culture forward, which is what like forty years now. So we're still a young, a young yeah, uh, forty fifty years. Yeah. And this first, the project you just released is your first like full length debut. Yeah, I I did release something before mm -hmm. that, but it was like a lot of singles and videos, right? Yeah, pretty much. What was the process in creating the project for you? Man, it it <laughs> it took me about three years, maybe even more. Man, like people kept asking me, yo, once I developed my skill mm -hmm. and got and got enough respect for people to and start building a fan base, they constantly was being told you know when you're gonna drop a project bro when you can drop a project and uh the whole process man i i've i've, I've uh sorry you're good yeah guess <laughs> <laughs> i'm a gassy guy it's all good it's all good <laughs> like i was saying man that's like a three four year process and i rewrote the album I've, I've I had an, uh, a whole like 15 20 songs mm -hmm. before that that were going to originally be on the project and I just I I just didn't wasn't feeling it mm -hmm. man you know so I scrapped that like hundreds of times it is uh I feel like uh since I'm a martial artist it's like a dojo man and I got to just keep training until I felt like I was I was adequate enough to release that I I would go to I've gone to like five different studios, bro. Like uh, people's home studios, professional studios, and I would work on the same song <laughs> like ten, twenty times. So that <laughs> so much money, man. Uh, but it was all worth it, man, to to drop that because in the end, I finally was satisfied after all those three, mm. four years of what I uh, ended up with the result I ended up with. What was the turning point for you to say? This project is is where it needs to be. Let's push this out. I think uh, uh, a couple weeks before I dropped it, actually, you know, I I, I uh, those two weeks I just kept listening to it over and over again and bumping that, and, and uh, I was just kept zoning out, and I was like, wow, you know, this actually flows together. This is this actually emulates who I am as a as a MC as a lyricist as of now. And for this project specifically, if uh, people listen to it, I am big on uh, the language of hip hop. So there are a lot of literary devices. There are a lot of metaphors and similes and so forth. And I'm real technical on this project. I'm not necessarily speaking on politics, which is what, what I originally started writing out with. I started, I was big on uh, being a conscious MC, but with this project, I was more f definitely more focused on like punchlines, you know. Like, uh, before we get into that, what what kind of made you segue away from uh, I would want to say like the immortal technique world of hip hop where it has to be super, super political, super conscious, 
and you just want to do something just for the hip hop culture as itself. I felt like uh, I felt like uh, at at the time I was kind of confused myself probably with what what's going on in the world because politics are all over the place right now, and I didn't want to be like. Uh, another uh, just a copy of immortal technique as well i just want to i want to push my own style because mm-hmm. that's definitely the cat people compared me to the most and i was like uh i'm just trying to be myself man you know obviously i think that guy's dope so I, i've met him before too i've got his autograph mm-hmm. before too but uh i just feel like uh this was pushing towards uh creating my own style and uh i wanted to uh become more hip hop i guess embody hip hop mm-hmm. and by doing that you you uh take that language like i was doing with this project and uh i pretty much was improvising man like it it just it just felt right i was just i felt like uh i was channeling the divine in a in a strange way and that's that's what I want. When it it just felt right to instead of pushing an agenda, a political agenda, and being all super conspiracy mm-hmm. theory, which I feel like a lot of maybe not a lot of people could get into. I feel like more people would be uh, willing to take in the project if I was if I was just uh, showing my my skill set, mm-hmm. which is what what this is more doing. For sure, and also it kind of does with a lot of your personal qualities mentality as well where i feel like when we get super political it's just that and right. the conversation is just about that where it's right. all right well this music's created for you to get to know me right. and then hopefully you know create some sort of relationship that you know continues to build on as as years go by um you mentioned you had you had met immortal you had met rakim you had uh met uh krs1 yes did you ever get the opportunity to ask him a question or yeah yeah man i've I've asked all of them questions bro uh what were some questions you asked and what was their response a krs1 i asked him um what uh how can i uh add to the culture and krs1 looked at me and he was signing because i i had uh purchased this book the gospel of hip-hop and mm-hmm. i was trying to have him sign that and he looked at me, he's like, you read the book, right? And I was like, yeah, man. He's like, so you should already know that answer, bro. Because uh, the the book pretty much, it, it's speaking about uh, the culture as kind of a spirituality. Mm. And I did understand what he meant by that. He, you know, he was, he was saying, just be yourself. That's what the culture is. He, I guess I understood that without him actually mm. saying it. So that was definitely a dope experience. I was like definitely geeking out with that. Uh with Rakim, uh, I asked him, "Do you have any advice for me as start starting out as a rapper or as an MC?" And he was Rakim was like, "Yeah, no doubt." Uh, <laughs> that, that sounds like a, a Rakim yeah. mannerism. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, uh, Rakim. <laughs> Was, my, was he wearing Tim's? <laughs> yeah, he, he actually was, bro. That's such a New York thing. He actually was, bro. That that guy definitely is New York, man. That he's he's uh, he, you wouldn't think he he dresses just like a, a OG, uh-huh. straight OG with with his lyrical content uh-huh. and capabilities. You wouldn't you. It, it's strange to see him because he he dresses like a, a, a he got that that thug. That's him. Uh-huh. But but when he starts rapping and speaking, it's like it just blows your mind. Uh-huh. Like holy crap. But with Rakim, he's yeah. He was like, yeah, no doubt. You know, just you do you. You don't let anybody tell you what to do, and you keep on pursuing that. So that was, I was uh, glad to get that advice. And with a uh, mortal technique, I actually did freak out the most, <laughs> like a like a giddy fangirl. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, what what was the exchange? Uh, I was waiting to get his autograph signed, and uh, Mortal Technique was like, uh, I was wearing this Abraham Lincoln shirt, and it says uh, "Drop beats, not bombs." And the Mortal Technique was like, "Yo, I like your shirt." And me freaking out, I was like, oh, "I'm glad you like it. You can have it." <laughs> <laughs> I was at that point. I was at that point, and then uh, also before I yeah. met him, I was I I yelled out, uh, "Viva la revolution!" And uh, 
I said that super loud, mm-hmm. and, and his bodyguard was like, "Yo, calm down." <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get arrested because yeah. he's he's known to be like. I mean, obviously, he always pushes the envelope, but he's, like, super militant. He does not yeah. care. Yes, yes, and he has goons with him. That's not a joke either, man. So that guy was like, "What? what's wrong with this this guy, man? I'm going to have to take him. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long ago was that? This was about t- two years ago. Okay. Two, something like that, two years ago. Yeah. But that that's what happened with that. That was pretty funny. <laughs> And uh, Immortal Te- I shook Immortal Technique's hand, and uh, you could tell that he was tired because he, he had just done his uh, really dope performance, man, and he he already had met with, like, 100 other fans, and he was like, man, this guy's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of going back to what Rakim said, how have you been able to stay on course regardless of what people might say? I think uh, I just... Really, uh, in in today in in rap and hip hop, uh, a lot of people are are um, obviously if you if you listen to the mainstream radio, people are going towards a more uh, trap. Trap is really popular right mm-hmm. now, and uh, their their lyrical mm-hmm. content is it's a little more I guess watered down and and more more like nursery rhymish. Mm-hmm. Like you know, a lot their flows would be like. Da 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 da. Whereas I like to definitely switch it up a lot more. And uh, my my style, if you if you're listening to my songs, you could you can obviously tell they they kind of have like a golden era type of feel. Mm-hmm. So you know I uh I got a uh obviously a big '90s influence, and I and I kept with that, even though uh, most rappers today are are. Uh, would rather have modern beats. I don't care. I'll, I'll hop yeah. up on a uh, boom bat beat yeah. and I'll try to kill that too. Not not to get cocky or anything, but you do have a song by that name, and it's a trap style beat. So yeah. for you in this project, what kind of make, made you segue away from from any like trap style instrumentals? Uh, which in that specific track, you were still very super lyrical, Martin. and kind of just stick to the golden era boom bap gritty beats. Uh, what specifically about the production you chose made you? Uh, selected for your project. Um, wait, which track? Which track? Uh, the the. I mean, just in. I mean, for the uh, most general, part, yeah, general? just in general. Uh, that that's like uh, going back to what I was saying about the the, Jeet Kune Do concept with Bruce Lee, which is pretty much uh, take what's useful and disregard everything else, man. So that that's like a, a hybrid thing, that that I like to do. I like to uh. I combine uh, a modern style and still and still keep it dope and lyrical, mm-hmm. man. You know, I'm thinking that. And you know, I guess I gotta define what what is lyrical. I can't just say that. To me, something lyrical, you have to really take in the technical part of 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 rap, which is flow, delivery, uh, rhyme schemes, and uh, uh, content. And there was this, uh, I explained that one time in, in a class I did. It was, uh, what was the class? It was like a, spe- a speech class. And I, I was trying to, I guess, explain hip-hop culture, the rap part. And I explained it using uh, Big Pun's, uh, one of Big Pun's verses. Uh, the the dead in the middle, yeah. little Italy, little oh, that yeah, we know yeah. that we real. So the way I explained that was like, I said it first. I said, um, the, the, uh, what is it? It's flow. Mm -hmm. Flow would be how, how he rhythmically said that. So dead in the middle with diddly little did we know that we middle to middle man who didn't do diddly. And then what's, what's the concept of that? The concept of that he's talking about, um, he had, uh, he was talking to his guy, and then uh, you know, an undercover uh, undercover cop infiltrated what he was talking about, and then you put that together with delivery. With delivery is kind of your performance, so it'd be like dead in the middle, a little Italy, little that we know that we riddle to middle man who didn't do diddly. So you put yourself into that. So that I guess that's how I, I explain what lyrical is, kind of if uh, that makes any sense. Putting those elements together. No, it makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Word. Uh, backtracking a little bit, uh, you're talking about, you know, the influence of martial arts in this project, you know, 
way of intercepting ram device just to play off of bruce lee's way of the intercepting fists yes uh what do you think like what component there's like a little bit of a history actually with martial arts and hip-hop specifically with the wu-tang clan yeah who they <laughs> basically yeah. their whole aesthetic their whole uh like sound like everything's just based off of like whole, uh old school kung fu flicks no doubt so like what do you think is is what parts of martial arts is something that's appealing to to rappers to, to to draw inspiration from well man the i guess with with the martial art it's kind of uh uh you kind of have to be aggressive but at the same time you have to be passive because uh you never know what what uh technique another person is using so you you got to find the balance and that and that's a, a huge part of it, finding that balance, which is body, mind, and spirit, and like applying that to rap, man, body, mind, and spirit. You you become like uh, your your skills probably would elevate if you if you really understand that. And with like Wu Tang, like RZA would would say, like, yeah, man, you gotta treat that beat like you're you're sparring with it, like you're fighting with it, because you if if you don't, that beat is gonna beat you up. It's gonna it's gonna. <laughs> It's gonna devour you, so you got to You got to be able to to hop on, I guess, any type of dope beat and ride with it and really flow with it. Like I said, use your your body, mind, and spirit, that that cadence, I suppose. But also at the same time, I I martial art has helped me with rap because breathing technique, breathing technique is a huge important part of being an MC, especially if you're gonna perform, because if you run out of breath on stage or if you, you don't know how to use your vocals, which has happened to me before, it was super embarrassing. My my first show, I threw out my voice and I was up there rapping like, Who's you? <laughs> but Cats was still riding with me, so I was okay. <laughs> so how, how was that? How was that from that specific show to now? How have you been able to progress? Oh, man. Uh, for, from there... At the t- at the time, I was like so upset about it that that happened, but you have to go through trial and error in, o- in order to to overcome and really and really evolve. And from there to now, man, like yeah, my breath control has gotten definitely better. Uh, f- now I could I could rock a show. I, the the longest I've done is like thirty thirty forty minutes. I, I I'm just up there, and I could just keep on freestyling like uh with my my dj back here man he, he'll just put on some beats scratch some into there and and what we'll, was we'll just completely do that stuff off the top man and uh going back to to the breath control and the martial art man yeah that that's definitely helped me improved and going from then to now it's a a big step <laughs> From to actually be able to 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 rock the mic adequately. Uh, so going back to martial arts, uh, how was how like how was that? How did you get into that? Like, what was like the say? What was the day where you just decided? You know what? I'm gonna learn how to be a part of this. I don't know. I don't know how really how to describe it because it's like martial arts is really is truly an art form. Yes, it is definitely. Like, it, it is definitely truly. Is. A, it's not just something where you just go in like, okay, I'm going to go in and, and you know learn how to beat up people. It's yeah. something that's like requires a lot of discipline, requires a lot of technique. What made you decide to to do, commit yourself to that? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that it's a it's an art form, and what makes it an art form is that you, you have to be creative at that moment in time and be able to improvise. Any anything that that you can use, uh, and uh, what what got me into it was uh, when I was uh seven, something like that. You know, uh, my my uncle was actually a, a martial artist. My uncle Lucito, shout out to him. He he was uh doing Shaolin Kung Fu at the time, and uh, he would show me movies and uh, like. One of the first movies it showed me was Jackie Chan's Rumble in the Bronx. And I remember watching that as a shorty, and I was just so mesmerized. I was like, man, this guy is so dope, bro. He's he's just, you know, going nuts on people. I, I want to do that, too. So that And that, that pretty much got me involved. I started taking karate lessons for a little bit, uh, taekwondo lessons. 
uh, around 10, 10, 10 or 12, I started taking Taekwondo. That's when I really started taking it more serious. And uh, from from then, I, I started boxing, and now I'm in a, a Wing Chun, a type of Wing Chun system right now with my uh, master, uh, C. Joe Tim Wright. He's a, he's a grandmaster of the style, meaning he, he created his own style too, kind of like... Uh, the Bruce Lee Jeet Kune Do, which is Bruce Lee's style. So yeah, I, I guess that's the history of my martial art upbringing. <laughs> For sure. All right. Well, let's uh, kind of segue because I think I feel like we have a few minutes left. Where? Um, how has it been breaking into the Chicago hip hop scene specifically? I'll say that again. Remember. How? How? Like, what are some of the difficulties of breaking into the Chicago hip hop scene? With with Chicago hip hop, uh, there is a. Uh, we we do live in a uh i suppose in in the more uh tougher areas gang influence is huge on on chicago and a lot of a lot of people i suppose prefer to to listen to to more that type of music which is they would call it drill you know but at the same time that that drill music is what put chicago on the scene as of now i would say i, I would say you know with chief keith when he was starting to rise up and young chop um break breaking into the scene now uh i wish more chicago artists would would have more camaraderie with each other and uh I appreciate that you guys have. I'm definitely grateful that you guys brought me up on the show too, man. Because that that's super dope, man. Mm. That's that's what I was saying, camaraderie, and uh, I guess uh, at this at the same time there are a lot of super dope cats that that I could definitely come to mind, and uh, they have all their own styles. Because ever since ever, ever, we kind of stepped away from drill now, and we're go. I guess we're we're kind of entering a new era with Chance the Rapper who who added his own element of hip-hop, I guess, kind of making it more conscious and back to the lyrical, like those Common and Kanye way, uh, days. And uh, I guess stepping onto the scene now, we, we can be more creative and uh, have our own style, which is um, definitely super towards that and super for that uh expressing yourself that's that's what this culture is man it's 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 being yourself and uh, adding that to the art form for sure um let's talk about the project real quick before we head out uh what has been the feedback for you i i've got a lot of uh definitely dope feedback man i'm i'm really proud of myself man i could i could say that uh i've uh sent it out to uh underground cats that have a, a more bigger skill set or or bigger a bigger fan base like mm-hmm. i don't know if you ever heard of mr green no M- mr green he has this show called live on the streets he's he's uh really popular he's from the east coast he he said he told me that he really liked uh one of the rap slayer which is on the project and i was like oh man yeah that's what's up you know uh a villa told me that he likes uh uh a villa is a homie yeah he's a homie word, word up that's what's up man yeah a- graduated from nepal as well Really? Yeah, oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, shout outs to A Villa, man. He told me he he uh I sent him my song Dope Spit and he sent me back the chorus and I was like, Oh snap, yeah, yeah. you know, so uh guys with bigger platforms, if they're and old school heads, if if they're telling me that they, they think it's dope, man, that I, I love the feedback, man. And obviously I've gotten some negative feedback too for it's it tends to be the the younger audience who who kind of wants to just only be stuck with with one type of yeah. rap style, which is the the, the little whoever's yeah, <laughs> pretty. <laughs> As you just change your names to Lil G Tech and they'll ride with it. <laughs> Lil G Tech, yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be that young Lil G Tech, yeah, man. But uh, for for the most part, yeah. I've, I've got Instead it. of the ill metaphor, it might have to be the little metaphor. The li- <laughs> <laughs> Ill little metaphor. <laughs> hey, that if if that uh, G take the little metaphor. G- <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, man. <laughs> that, I might uh, have to take that in mind, bro. So uh, next time I come up here, I'm a, I'm a have a, a bigger fan base because just just by changing yeah. that that word. <laughs> I mean, on the video from Monster, you you kind of talk about whack rappers, so that yeah. might be a way to create some sort of satire. 
to make fun of a whack rappers and definitely. then in the process still be super lyrical. Def- definitely, and 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 my and my video for for dope spit too, man. Like uh, what's it called? Uh, I put out uh, a puppet with, mm-hmm. with 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 the with the puppet that like you're saying, man. That's definitely a satire of whack quote unquote whack what a whack rapper is yeah. you know a, a puppet actually uh the, the first way i heard about you was so i'm gonna give him a quick shout out if he's listening straight Ricardo up Ibanez, yes sir uh, shout out to you bro and usually like when people send me music or like want me to check out their boy it's usually super whack <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate that there man so uh, he sent me the video for dose but i'm like yo this dude's pretty dope and then i think from there i linked to, looked into more of your music Word up, that's love, man. That's love, yeah. Like you said, shout out to Ricardo Banyas, man. We we went to high school together. That's what's up, man. And yeah, with with the uh, puppet rappers, uh, you uh, MCs, you don't want to be that for sure. <laughs> uh, before we head out, why should either your your fan base continue to invest in you and new listeners invest in you? What are why should people invest in G Tech the Immortal Four in twenty seventeen? And beyond, I think uh, you guys are really gonna like uh, how how I progress with my music, and I'm really like I've been saying throughout the interview, I'm really just trying to push on being myself, and I and I'm trying to add to the hip hop culture and elevate minds, and just really get a feel good vibe and try to push out more positivity than what's going on with Chicago because right now Chicago has such a negative view in the public and that's not completely true man we there's there's a lot of love going on here and I and I really want to push that out for the people and I and I definitely do this for the people and my family and and that's what I'm all about and I and I try to push those ideas and concepts into my music but at the same time I, I, I try to combine that with with making it dope to vibe to so yeah just I appreciate Anybody who's listening to me and really and rocks with me, man, and I'm gonna keep on just getting more dope and progress my skills as much as I can, man. For sure. And then, where can people reach you at social media? Whether send you instrumentals, or maybe collab. Where can people reach you at? You can uh, at uh, get uh, Facebook.com/slash GTIM and the number four that GTIM and the number four on Facebook.com. Also, SoundCloud.com. Slash G T I M and the number four. Uh, no, no Twitter, no IG. I I do have a Twitter, but it's it's the. <laughs> I need a. You got to get more visible on there, bro. Yeah, yeah you're you got to right. make those connections pop. Yes, sir. You're right. Definitely. I do. Yeah, I have a, t- a Twitter and an Instagram, and that's G Tech the Ill Metaphor. But it's definitely easier to just type in G T I M on YouTube, mm. and you'll probably G- or G T I M and the number four. And you'll see some of my material on there, like cocky like that or dope spit, and and I have a lot, I have a lot of videos, so you guys should check that out, man. And so I have a lot of songs on SoundCloud too, so for sure. So with that being said, we want to thank you. We're gonna get into some of your music, word, and we'll we'll go from there. So hopefully, this is a good opportunity for you to build a connection with us going forward and hopefully have you feel here a few more times talking about the next projects or things word, that you word. have coming up. Uh, any shows? Any of that? Uh, as of now, I'm just uh, trying to push more uh, music videos. Uh, I have a, one of my uh, a videographer here with me. We're we're working on a, a kung fu type of video, which I can't wait to push that out. It's gonna have like uh, fight scenes along with my song Rap Slayer. So yeah, I'm trying to just push out more more uh, visuals as of now. But uh, eventually, you'll if I am doing a show, you'll you'll be first to know for sure. And with that being said, we will be back. Word, word, man. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocspit. 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 It's like eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Catch a tiger by the toe. You bet that kill it.